This is going to be an overview of using FilterStorm Pro on iPad. When you first start at FilterStorm Pro, um, you'll notice you have these, this library and these uh, two divisions in it, the FS Pro library and the iPad library. Now the iPad, iPad library will start filling up automatically with all the uh, pictures you have um, in the Photos app. Um, it won't copy in all the data. What it will do is just create a thumbnail for each one and uh, read in the metadata so you can organize that um, or use them. Um, whereas the FS Pro library will con contain images that are actually stored within the app. Um, so this is things you might paste from the clipboard, open in from other apps, or uh, you can also import into uh, the FS Pro library from uh, the iPad library by using this button here. And it will bring up uh, the contents of your iPad library. You can select uh, select something or go into it and uh, choose which ones you want to bring. Hit this import selected button and they will be imported. Now you can change the name of uh, a collection by tapping and holding. Um, I'll just name it test. Um, and you can also, uh, if you're inside of it, you can uh, name it by tapping on either the name or the settings button. So let's go into uh, another collection I have, just double tap to uh, enter the collection. So you can see I have some star ratings here. Uh, and I can filter for these star ratings. So if I hit the star button and filter, then it brings only th things with one star or higher. And that'll save if I back out uh, and come back in. It'll still only show the things that are starred. So this is nice if you want to just uh, concentrate on the ones you like, but not delete anything else. You can do it like that. Uh, there are several ways to enter in these star ratings. You can use two fingers and drag down. Uh, that's the one I use most often personally. You can um, select an image and or multiple images, in fact, and uh, use this rate button here. And I can also uh, do a pinch open to enter quick view and Quick view has a star slider down here. I can use that. I can also enter in metadata here and pinch to close. Uh, you might see a loading thing before it opens. If there hasn't been a larger preview generated, it will do it at that time. It'll take a second or so. Now to edit an image, I just double tap on it and it will uh, enter the editing screen. Just tap that to go back. Uh, if I've already edited an image, you see there's this double line showing there's a stack of images. So if I tap on that, I won't go to edit. I'll, it'll show the different versions, the edited version, the original version, and you can have mo more than more than one edited version. Um, and then you can choose which one to go back and edit again. Uh, so in this image tab, we have metadata. So I can uh, select some images. Um, I can ch add, uh, if I tap the settings button, I can turn on which IPTC fields I want to be shown in here. So it shows only the ones I want. And I can go in and I can go through headline. You know, I have these all set up now and I can type them in and it will apply to all the ones I have selected. I can use the select all button here to select them all. Select none. Now if I go and I change uh, the file name here, uh, what it will do, if I have multiple selected, is it will uh, append ascending numbers to the ends of them. Uh, now let's go and edit an image. The editing is broken into three tabs, canvas, filters, layers. I'm not going to go into layers in this video, but go over a few things here. Uh, the cropping tool. 
Um, in most desktop software, you draw the box for where to crop. It's a bit different here. You uh, have the box always displayed, and you uh, pinch and pan to position the image within the box. You can change uh, the shape of it by dragging the sides. And you can scale like that. And you can select specific image ratios from this pop popover and some common ones. Just cancel that and you can also enter in here. If you always are using the same ones, you can uh, save them here. And <clears throat> uh, those will stick around so it'll default to whatever you like. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and apply something just so that I can show you uh, this clock icon. You tap on that, gives you an image history. And you can see the crop, uh, the original opened and when I cropped it, so I can go back to when it was opened. Just tap that to go back. Uh, below that we have a scale to fit, which is very useful. Um, if you always want something to be, say, uh, 3,000 pixels on the long side, I can just enter 3,000 by 3,000 and it'll fit it so it it fits within a 3,000 pixel box. So the long side will be 3,000 pixels, the short side will just be scaled uh, to match. If I just enter 3,000 and nothing, what it will do is it will make the, the width 3,000 pixels and the height will scale. In this case, it will be shorter, but if we're an uh, image in portrait orientation, it would be greater than 3,000 on the, on the height. We also have these uh, rotate buttons down here, but I'm not going to show those now. Um, so the filters menu has things like curves, levels, um, sharpening, things like that. Uh, I'm just going to go to brightness contrast just to show how this works. Um, so you get a cancel button up here, one or more sliders. Uh, in this case, they show a real time preview. Some of them won't, but a lot of them will. Uh, apply via mask button and an apply button. I can also use this here to uh, change which side the preview shows on. So right side, left side, whole image. I'm just going to cancel this for now. And I'm going to move the controls to the right hand side so my hand isn't covering so much of the image. Um, I'm going to go into curves now so that I can show off the masking tools. I can move, slide this around. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to set the curves for the sky. I'm going to use a uh, RGB curve. If I'm going uh, through this quickly, this editing part, I'd suggest using the uh, uh, watching the video demonstration video for the standard version of FilterStorm. I take some more time uh, explaining how curves work and things like that in that video. Um, so I'm going to use the mask button. And so we get the masking tools. This lets us pan and scale without changing the mask. But we have uh, a brush tool. We can make a big brush. An eraser tool works the same way, except it erases. The gradient tool. Uh, we have a bunch of shapes of gradient. We have circular gradient. And you just use these. You can use with one or two fingers these two points to set how you want the gradient. Uh, the color range selection tool. So how this works is it takes the uh, pixel value of the color directly below this loop and uses a tolerance based on the slider to uh, <clears throat> apply the mask based on color. Uh, an opacity slider. This is just simple. Adds <clears throat> uh, opacity to everything. A uh, vignette. Uh, this button inverts the mask, so with nothing it'll just make it the whole image, but if I had that, you can see it in, oops, inverts. And uh, I can let it show the color of, of uh, use a color to show where the mask is rather than showing a preview of the actual final image under these settings. I'm just going to take a gradient um, and set it like this and apply that. 
and I'll just go through the curves again and I'm going to uh, just take a rush. If you're doing, um, <clears throat> if you want to uh, dodge burn, I just, just uh, set the image brighter or darker and set the opacity down and then you can go over several times to uh, just keep adding on to the change and that works quite well. I'll supply that. So now we have an edited image. We come back, we see there's a double outline like we saw before with the, uh, the two versions. And if I want to export that or multiple images, I just select all the images I want to export. Go to my export tab and uh, select the places I want to export to and hit the send photos button. Um, there will be another video about setting up different destinations for FTP, things like that. Um, but that's the basic overview.